This is Jennifer Fitzgibbon. I had to now, get sized for my coat. My apologies, I'm fixing it right now. It's a little <laughs> bit big. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Now, describe to me, uh, you have your master's. Yes, I have my master's degree. Um, and I am a clinical oncology dietitian, and I'm also board certified in oncology nutrition. So what's the RDN? Registered Dietitian Nutritionist. And the CSO? That's a certified specialist in oncology. And the CDN is the? It's, it's the New York State. Okay. <laughs> it's New York State Nutrition. You have many great letters after your name. It, it, yeah, it really doesn't mean much. But so, <laughs> Basically, um, I could work with Stony Brook with those letters. <laughs> so tell us about uh, your department. What do you do? Yeah, so I mean, I, what I've been hearing a lot is, is about screening. So um, one, of, one of the major things um, is, that's extremely important is the nutritional screening that we've been working so hard to do. Um, because early screening and prevention and pretty much the capture of malnutrition and, and also high body mass index um, is extremely important, especially with cancer patients. So that's something that we've been diligently trying to do, um, not just because of the COC guidelines, but just because of a cancer patient. It's so important to, again, capture that, that uh, weight loss, um, but just to pretty much capture a patient that's in need and has any sort of nutrition impact symptom early. So a patient gets diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. they come to Stony Brook Cancer Center for treatment automatically in their EMR, they are, they are uh, screened, there's yes. a nutritional screening. Correct, so they're asked several questions, it's a validated screening tool, they're asked something along the lines of, <laughs> um, how is your appetite? Have you had experiencing, or are you experiencing any weight loss, and do you have the feeding tube? And upon that screen, um, they get generated um, a, a way to make, a, have an appointment scheduled. Okay. Yeah. So. If uh, after you, what would make you come into the picture for the patient now after this? Yeah, so an screen. appointment then gets scheduled and we take it from there. Um, even if the patient doesn't want to participate, if, and I know that may sound <laughs> a little, a little harsh, but we, we like to be on the case, so to speak, because um, we like to, for example, if a patient has a feeding tube, a lot of times they don't actually have any supplies set up. So that's an extremely important thing to have awareness of. Um, again, supplies, you know, you want to make sure that the patient is being fed. So this extra service, which is, it seems like it's an added service mm -hmm. as to the normal standard of care for a patient, uh, comes at no extra cost to the patient. That's correct, it's a free service for the patients, yes. So it's a free service covered by the cancer center offered to the patient. Now, if a patient was diagnosed and you speak with them, are you making sure um, they're getting the right amount of protein, of carbohydrates. Right, is so there's a, a formal nutrition assessment that gets put into the chart, and then there's, of course, follow-up care then after. So you could really be on the patient's case from the moment they start until the moment they're cured. Right, until then after, correct. So, so we're part of the picture from then after. You're mm -hmm. part of the team. Mm -hmm. And speaking of collaboration, we've, we've spoken of collaboration from start to finish today, uh, which is just absolutely wonderful because medicine is not a one-person uh, business and not a one-person game, right? It's a, it's a team. And you're, you're part of the team. Now, who do you usually collaborate with on the team? Right, well, we cover the whole we, meaning myself and my colleague, we're, we're a two-member team, <laughs> but we cover the whole cancer center. But as far as um, collaborative care, we um, work with uh, the multidisciplinary teams. I, I personally work with the head and neck cancer team. Mm -hmm. I round with them. And um, as far as pediatrics, as far as medical oncology, surgical oncology, um, I, I, I hate when I go down this list because <laughs> it's pretty much the all you know pretty much the entire cancer center. Um, yeah, so. So you'll even go on rounds. Yes, yes, I do. I go on rounds. <sighs> Terrifying yeah. at times for uh, while I was in medical school, but I'm sure fun and exciting. You know, I, uh, I do enjoy it. I love it. Um, I've been doing this for 20, 20 plus years, twenty five years actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, so. 
Yeah, so as far as, of course, so, th so then there's, there's that piece as far as, I mean, we, we also have a fund to fund um, the supplemental care. So if somebody, somebody's insurance is not going to, of course, cover the cost of their enteral care, then we have a grant slash fund that's going to um, cover the cost. And we'll just send um, enteral or even supplements for that matter to a patient's home. And then um, we also have a new um, breast cancer fund that we will go shopping with a patient and we'll teach a patient, um, we'll educate a patient on, um, you know, let's just say they have some sort of question and they're like, you know, we just, we think that food is actually expensive. That'll set, that'll set off a bell in our head. <laughs> and we'll be like, you know what? We actually have a gift card funded program and we'll actually educate a patient on, um, on how to eat healthy. So it's something that we're really excited about now. Um, and even that being said, I mean, there's different chapters of cancer care, as we know. There's things that we also, um, um, educate patients on other than the, you know the clinical pieces. I know that you were starting to ask as far as protein and assessments and calories, which of course is diverse for so many things. Um, and then there's also survivorship eating mm. and you know things that we um, <clears throat> educate patients and get asked you know a heck of a lot about as far as like well how can I you know prevent cancer or how can I you know eat in a healthy way and there are things um, that we have been found that that of course you know science has proven and a couple of things do stand out um, red meat for example has a very mm. strong uh, proven factor behind it so that's one thing and then there's processed meats that we want to try to avoid and then alcohol alcohol always gets tricky because people are like well, what about red wine <laughs> red wine is something that you know we think has a an anti carcinogenic effect but red wine no matter what um, has been found to actually um, have actually a carcinogenic effect in in any any way shape or form <laughs> unfortunately I hate to be the bearer of bad news so um, one glass every single day or two glasses if you're a male of certain size um, has been found to actually be a cancer causation. Um, and then another strong um, cancer causation according to science is um, sugary drinks. And I know people want to demonize sugar and say horrible things about sugar, and people ask me about sugar all the time. Um, and it's not to say that if you live a healthy life and if you're active and you have sugar every now and again, because the, the association that we really want to put towards sugar is um, the obesity and the weight factor, because the association with the sugar is the actual hormone fluxes and the hormone um, types of cancers. But sugar, sugary drinks and the excess intake of it in general on a regular basis does have the association um, to cancer. So in general, um, I know that we have a, a limited time and these talks can go into so many interesting directions and I do enjoy talking about it. And I will take you know questions via email, my card is out there. But again, cancer has so many different chapters. There's a clinical piece, and then there's what we're doing, and then there's the exciting you know, places that we can go in, in these um, lectures and talks. But as far as, um, as, far as uh, the, the different types of um, things that, that we can talk about, I, I definitely think that um, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit derailed right now. So do you want, do you want to push me in a direction? So, <laughs> so you took all the fun out of it for us. You're telling us... <laughs> Uh, no amount of oh, red wine is Did I say processed safe. meats? <laughs> you said processed meats. You said red wine. So yeah. now my steak and glass of wine is out the window. Well, it's not that it's out the window. Because, again, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I, I always like to impress upon people not, never to live in the land of no, especially with working with, with cancer patients. Because you really want to enjoy yourself. You really want to live in, in a happy world and you want to enjoy things. It's just, it's, it's about balance. Right. So when we are talking about red meat, um, you know, the AICR, the American Institute of Cancer Research, they do actually give you an amount. <laughs> it's, it's about 14 ounces per week, which I think is a lot, believe it or not. So if, if you want to not have it, that's OK. But if you do want to limit yourself, I think that's a, a good choice, too. What we do recommend, and there are you know, strategic recommendations, is more of a plant-based diet. And that's what I think people don't do. I think people are, you know, I, I talk to people a lot about what you know, we're doing, what we're not doing. Um, and so really, the suggestions are between three and a half to five servings of plant-based 
foods, you know, and that is really the roughage. And that's what people are just not doing because that's really what's going to help to avoid you getting cancer or if you have had cancer, the secondary cancers. So that's really what we're not doing. Um, and again, when we're saying a serving, we're talking about, I always have my hand out. <laughs> and then they're like, well, that's your hand. And everybody's hand is their own serving. <laughs> so if you're going to really, really try to avoid getting the cancers, you want to have at least 30 grams of fiber a day. And then try to not have you know, really a heavy meat-based diet. And if you are going to have meat, just have it once in a while. And then again, try to avoid the, um, the, the heavy alcohol, and, or if just have it on occasion, you know, even if you, if you feel like, you know, you want to have your, your drink every now and again. And then try to have, you know, try to avoid the, the sugary-based foods. And, and try to be active. Activity, even though I'm not a physical therapist and I don't pretend to be, but activity is so important because that does increase your immune response, which is really what we're trying to do here. I know that was dis the discussion piece in Dr. Schuster, but really that's, that's, that's what this whole name of the game is, is your immune response. So it sounds simple. But it's but, not easy. But it's not easy. It's not. It's and it's not. day by day, and it's not beating yourself up, and it's not shaming yourself. And it's, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, get in the way you're, of, your, of your. You're, you're hitting it on the head. That's, that's the, the, the difficulty, mm -hmm. is the day by day. And you can convince yourself, OK, I know what I have to do. I know what I want to do should do. You got to live in, live in the land of threes. You have to know where you're going to be every three hours. You have to know where you're going to be every three days. And you have to know, you have to always plan three days ahead, which I think if you're a planner, which not everybody is, mm -hmm. but I think if you say to yourself, oh my gosh, am I going to be away from my refrigerator or away from, you know, wherever I'm going to need to be for three hours, you know, always know your, your, your rule of threes. And I think that's going to be the most helpful thing for you. And then if you know that you've made your mistake, then just go ahead and get up and, and try to plan ahead you know, for, for the next three hours or the next three days or the next, you know, and I think that that's really the best way to be. Right, well my mistake is I'll make a mistake on a cheat meal and then it'll be three years later. <laughs> and I said, oh wait, I forgot to snap out of mm -hmm. it. So uh, more of a personal question or what do you recommend if I'm starving or if anyone is you know, running around, they get busy. The Long Island's an expensive place to live. Mm -hmm. uh, many households have both parents are working, both partners are working, um, and you don't always have the time to meal prep and to plan things out and to know where you're going to be in three hours or when I'm mm -hmm. going to get hungry. Frozen, you have to have things. I, I, I mean, you, I kind of said something that you already said you didn't do, but if you have things that are frozen, like um, frozen vegetables or maybe... <laughs> Um, or even a sandwich, and I know that that's probably sometimes not the healthiest thing, but it may prevent you from eating something that was unhealthy um, or spending more money, because chances are, you said things are expensive, but chances are you're gonna go out and spend more money on something that, because you, you're starving. You have to always prevent yourself from getting to that level 10, which I know mm. it already, you already got to that point, you know, but again, <laughs> It, it's a matter of peanut butter and jelly, which I know, again, may not be the healthiest thing, but again, it's healthier than going to fast food, which people think is a lot cheaper, but it's really not. If you're riding around and you're, you've got an appointment, you've got work, et cetera, et cetera, you can't make it home, where are you stopping to eat? You're starving. Yeah. Well, okay, I usually have... Um, Chick-fil-A? <laughs> I didn't say Chick-fil-A. Oh. I per since you asked me, um, I personally have um, like nuts or snacks on hand because uh, I, I try to prevent myself. I, I get migraine headaches personally, so I have, I have like a, a condition that I wouldn't. I, I can't go a couple of hours without having something. Are nuts like mixed nuts healthy? It depends on the mixed nut. I know I'm never going to give you a straight answer, and I apologize. I but um, yeah, yeah, actually it can be. It can, it be. can be. Yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah. And it's, again, going to be healthier than, you know. Sure, it's healthier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, definitely, you, you want to have these things on hand so that you're not going to sabotage yourself. Right. And, then you, and then you're going to feel, like, not so great afterwards. So getting back to, you know, the oncology patients, I feel a lot of your work is education. Mm -hmm. it's, and a lot of it's behavioral because it's setting that, setting that person up for, you know, it, it's, it's education, behavioral. A lot of times people know what they have to do, but it's psychology and behavioral. But that could be so difficult from you to get across to them, even though, like we well, said, Well, ready know. is when ready is. And even if you tell, you know, you kind of situate them and, you know, it's, it's I, don't, 
I don't know if it's difficult. It's basically, you know, situating them. I, I can see the forest from the trees, and you know, I mean, it's it's fine. So you educate a patient, mm -hmm. you visit them, uh, say in the cancer center. Is it going to be during their, say they're getting a treatment, a chemotherapy, mm -hmm. is it gonna be during their treatment or do they make a separate appointment with you? Or are you visiting them you know, while they're? Yeah, so it's all the above. Um, sometimes It really depends on the patient's schedule, when they're able to. Um, if it's during clinic, like I was mentioning, in the multi-D clinic, it sometimes is right with the team. Um, or with the speech pathologist, um, so there's that, or we'll see them in fusion chair side, mm. or if we do catch them through the screen, then it's a phone call afterwards. How much time would you spend on a patient on average? I don't wanna ask that, I'll rephrase it. If a patient needs your services after your initial consultation, could they just call you? You they, know, they, it, workouts, or they shoot you an email. How do they? It's very hard for me. If you were to explain to me you need X grams of protein, X grams of carb, it gets confusing, mm -hmm. gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And then you're going home and you're reading labels. Then suddenly I have questions for you. Mm -hmm. How does that team yeah, work, you know, collaboration? That's an excellent proceed? question. Um, I usually do send them information and then they do review it. And then it, it, everybody's going to be different. Again, they, they are getting voluminous information, overwhelming information yeah. about their medical information. They just got hit with a very, very extensive diagnosis. So there's that. And then they're now reviewing you know, mm -hmm. all of their now new nutrition information. And there's that. And then a lot of it also, they're, they're feeling, you know, some patients feel a lot of shame. Did I do this to myself? Um, now I need to eat right, or they just want to avoid that. They don't even want to deal with it. So, so sometimes it's their care partner that's tackling this extensively, and then the patient doesn't even want to deal with it. So there's so many variables in that. But as far as time, I would estimate 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes, you know, depending upon each level. But, but it's all scheduled. It's all scheduled in, in that bracket of time. Right, okay. Yeah. Um. And, and that's just the oral intake education. I mean, we're not talking about um, a tube feeding education. Oh, sure, that's a whole nother. That takes sometimes a whole yeah, day for a patient. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of time. And then dealing with malnourished patients, yeah. you know, in cancer, it's, it's totally mm -hmm. uh, a different realm. Now, not to dive into a, a different area or topic, but I've heard about the acidity of foods mm. causing cancers or harming cancers mm. versus you know, more basic foods, so foods on the pH scale. Mm. Is that a thing? Mm -mm. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. What about water? I've heard of, uh, you know. The alkaline uh, water. Alkaline water, right? Yeah. Is Honestly, it's, it's not a well, it's, it's not proven, but what my suggestion is for somebody who really wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, I should say, um, wants to drink the water, it's not going to hurt you. And it, honestly, if it's going to make you hydrate yourself, then right. that's great. It's just going to be a very expensive way of hydrating yourself. But... It's unfortunately, there's, there's, no, there's not a lot of evidence base behind it. Um, I've seen in my experiences, there's cancer patients who loved the idea, believed in juicing, which is, um, you know, they get a juicer mm -hmm. and they're, and they're, they're getting these plant-based, mm -hmm. right, servings. Um, and every time they would make it themselves and drink the juice, they would picture it that these are little ninjas that they're swallowing and the ninjas were going to attack the, the cancer in their body. Yeah. And so it helped them more than just physically, it helped them mentally. And where are you with juicing? With, right. You know, if a patient asks you about juicing. Yeah, that's an interesting question because again, depending upon where their diet was, versus the, now they're juicing. Mm. I mean, they may be getting more micronutrients, but again, they're not getting the fiber. Um, mm. But then, you know, I have had patients that were just unable to take in any actual um, fiber just because of adhesions in their GI tract or for whatever sure. reason. So they were so 
glad and, and thankful and, and to actually have that. So it really depends on a case by case situation. So it's Whereas, a balance. Yes. It's about the balance. It's, it's very, can, you yeah. can juice, but yeah. have the meals if you're able to. Exactly. Also. We, fiber first and crunch food. I always crunch foods, <laughs> crunch foods first. But crunch you know, foods. not everybody can do that. And there are some people that, if it's going to really make you feel good and, and have that, then why, who am I to say you shouldn't? I, I would always recommend, like I said, fiber first and crunch foods first. But if. What are crunch foods? Uh, like actual plant foods, like real like vegetables and fruit. And plus, if somebody's overeating, you know, fruit, then that's another thing. If it's going to make their blood sugars high, so again, if it's it's about educating, getting in the right amount, <laughs> getting in the right amount of um, glucose too. I mean, mm -hmm. that that could be another concern. Right. So we would have to really have a conversation about what they're putting into that, and then take it from there. So thank goodness for. People like you who you. dedicate their life to mm -hmm. problem solving for the rest of the people out there because right. it is confusing. It is extremely difficult, um, and we need the guidance that you and your your uh, partner here have, and uh, and it's it's a huge part of the collaboration. And you're obviously a huge part of the you know the oncology team. So uh, we thank you for all the work you do. Thank you. And we thank you for your time and joining us. Thank you.